Hi, I'm George Bullendorf, Marketing Manager at Empower RF Systems. The next 30 minutes I'll be discussing the subject of a modern solid-state power amplifier architecture for very high power applications. And we'll also be getting some interesting commentary by our CTO Paolo Correa along the way. Now think about this. The architecture of power amplifiers hasn't changed in over 30 years since the introduction of the microcontroller for system control and reporting. Look around you. The advancements of your phone, not just the hardware on your phone, but the whole infrastructure. The TV has completely gone digital. Your car, electrical steering, you're not even mechanically connected to the wheel. Now, look at all the test equipment in your lab. Look at the advancements there. Most of it's gone digital, but not the amplifiers. Now look at the calibration stickers. Why is it the amplifier is the only piece of test equipment in your lab without one? There's no question that has to change, but when? And for that matter, what is the right architecture of the future? Well, granted it's subjective and certainly dependent on the application. For example, the best amplifier architecture is not the same for cellular tower-mounted amplifiers as it is for FAA radar. Who is the right architecture of the future for? It's for big power applications, domination of the electromagnetic battle space, multifunction radar and other complex waveform handling applications, TWT replacement in an aging infrastructure needing significant total cost of ownership and mean time to repair improvements, and SATCOM for higher availability and higher data rates. These are some example applications starving for a more capable solid state power amplifier solution Put simply, is the need for more effective use of the amplifier, not just in RF performance, but features that enhance end-use application capabilities. In a moment, I'm going to give you a visual of the system, but notice contemporary solid-state PA designs have not taken advantage of the newest technologies. High-speed A to D's and D to A converters, fiber optics, RF silicon integrated into FPGA fabric, and digital signal processing. But going digital is required for significant improvements in most of the categories shown here. Reliability and availability, fidelity, waveform flexibility, long pulse width and duty cycles, scalability, precise control with short latencies, accurate complex waveform power management, faster frequency hopping, and broader instantaneous detection bandwidth. Here's the visual of the system, a scalable liquid cooled amplifier. The implementations are usually broadband in CW or Pulse. It's uh, liquid cooled for power density reasons, for example, an equivalent air cooled system would be two and a half times larger. The amplifier system consists of a controller and a 3U form factor. There are 16 modular amplifier building blocks that are 2U in size and are fully integrated amplifiers in their own right. Uh, rounding out the major elements of the six foot tall chassis is the liquid cooling distribution system shown on the right. There's a 16 to 1 combiner that's integral to the rack, but stay tuned, not shown here, but detailed later. That lower left image is the backplane where each of the 16 modular 2U amplifier drawers slide in and out, blind mated to the rest of the system. And I should mention, not shown here, is the external pump system and heat exchanger uh, for the sake of brevity. The foundation of the scalable amplifier is the 2U liquid-cooled PA building block. Each 2U chassis is a fully functioning integrated amplifier, full gain, no external driver with power supplies. Separate system level power supplies not required. And I'll go into more detail, intimate detail on that 2U building block here shortly. The backplane connections and mechanical interface design ensure dripless liquid cooling and hot swap capability of the individual 2U amplifier drawers. The transmitter does not have to be taken offline to service or replace individual amplifiers. The output power waveguide combiner inside a cabinet is configured based on frequency and number of 2U boosters in a given transmitter cabinet. In other words, you don't have to be fully populated with, with 16. It can be 8, 12, 14, for example. The combiner design includes directional couplers with forward and reverse sample ports. What about the fiber optic capability inside the unit? Yes, one of the things that we thought is that we are putting up to 10 kilowatts in a 2U chassis, which is a very high power, okay? And what we are doing, what we were concerned is that when you wire that back to the back of the unit 
where it's going to plug into the uh, back planes and the combiners and the splitter, that uh, this could be um, could cause some ca uh, some kind of uh, EMI problem. So we have a patent on this where we put all the sensors and uh, and uh, um, uh, variables and uh, Ethernet and uh, serial port. All that is packed together in a fiber optic and sent to the back of the unit. So and uh, is decoded in the in, in the back of in the rear panel of the unit allowing us to have a very, just one fiber instead of a bunch of wires. Okay, uh, it's a simple reduction on labor cost and uh, extremely well uh, suitable for the level of power that we have inside the amplifier and avoid, and therefore avoiding EMI, EMC problems. It is a patent technology and uh, we are very proud to have that in our systems. I teased earlier the amplifier's lack of digital sophistication. The contemporary amplifier is an open loop design. It has limiter functions for peak power, visoire, thermal, but it's an open loop design with the responsibility of closing the loop left to the system integrator. That external loop is slow and limits operational capabilities. From a software architecture perspective, it's helpful to think of the goal being to take traditional external functionality and control and put it inside the amplifier. A couple obvious examples, uh, output power control without using external metering, and digital filtering eliminating costly external high power filters. Can, uh, can you tell me more about the digital detectors? Yes, in fact, the, de the detectors are analog, but there is a digital processing of the analog signal and uh, the advantage of doing that is that I can synchronize with the, the measurements and that will allow us to do um, measurements of peak and average at the same time at the same instant of time which give us the possibility of, in case of pulse signals, to do energy calculation and therefore protect the jute cycle not by measuring time but by measuring energy. Tell us about uh, designing combiners for big power. Okay. Uh, in in power's architecture, okay, we based our high power transmitters in hot swapping. Okay, to do that, the combiner has to be able to accept a plug, the RF plugging to the combiner, so that uh, what's the advantage of this is to reduce uh, the losses. So uh, each element of the array of uh, amplifiers Okay, plug direct into a combiner without any cable. So we reduce a uh, uh, number of components and we make it uh, hot swappable. Let's cover the meaning of scalability. This architecture has three levels of scalability. At the rack level where multiple racks can be combined. At the 2U drawer level where additional amplifier drawers can be added up to 16 in the case of a six foot cabinet. And for pulse applications, longer pulse width and duty cycles can be implemented with a firmware change. Here's an example of what we mean by big power. This S-band pulsed example represents a modeled and realistic configuration. It's 2.9 to 3.5 gigahertz, 310 kilowatt peak with 16% duty cycle. Uh, pulse width from 20 microseconds to 1,000 microseconds. Four seven-foot high chassis combined. Now you could arrive at this four cabinet configuration from any starting point and upgrading any or all of the combinations of the three upgrade paths. 
This concludes our look under the hood of a modern solid state amplifier architecture and let's wrap up highlighting the resulting features and benefits. It has lower total cost of ownership than non-modular architectures. It's always on air designed. It offers extreme effective MTBF. It's upgradable in power. It has enhanced pulse capabilities and fidelity. It's got waveform flexibility. Signal processing functions are on the roadmap and swap is better in many cases. Plus, features that ease integration. To learn more, send us an email to sales at empowerrf.com. I see green lights. All over the face.